way it can penetrate is through free will. You have to take your armor off and let it in. Mm -hmm. It ain't going to twist your arm and say, make me do it. You have to let me in. And in the way that reads also when it says that he delivered just Lot, right? it's not saying him just Lot to him only. Man. It was, he was a just man. Right. That's how it reads. He was a just man. Right. The just Lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because we know his wife and uh, his two daughters came out with him as well. So just like he explained that just, it cleared up if you thought it was Lot by itself. Because you're going to read his wife and two daughters come out. So you're knowing this is a righteous man and a wicked king. Mm -hmm. It's the same way if somebody go off to rehab up in Poplar Bluff somewhere back up in some corn field 200 miles off the main road. And he called home. Y'all, I am doing so good. I'm free of that dope. I've been free for two weeks. Well, you up in no man's land. Uh, when they going to let you out of there? I got 28 days more to go, then I'm coming back to Euclid and Coke Bridge. <laughs> well, guess who's back on Euclid and Coke Bridge? The same ones that loaded you up. Are you going to be prepared when you get back there? If you ain't, you need to start trying to make residence up there. But you can't live in a rehab house. No more than we can pack it up and go to somewhere else on planet Earth and the kingdom is safe. That's what he told Christ, didn't he? He said, all these kingdoms I give you, your father gave them to me. I run the world. So what do you think you're going to run to right now until Christ bounds this strong man and snatches it from you? Let's get some more. Verse, two more verses. Verse 8. Uh -huh. For that righteous man dwelling among them uh -huh. in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Woo. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the, the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust until the day of judgment to be punished. So y'all see, there is a day of judgment. You ain't gonna keep coming back trying to get it right. If you leave this life, there's gonna be a day of judgment for your next waking moment. You ain't get to come back. This ain't reincarnation. It's called resurrection mm -hmm. of the dead. Mm -hmm. No, you ain't gonna keep coming. How you gonna control reincarnation? Reincarnation, you come back to anything. A German shepherd, a blade, a lion, whatever. And then you come back in different races. Now, what they teach, what they, what they, what the brothers that, that teach that, you can refer to them, you know, the false doctrine, they teach that you come back as your great grandfather. As your great grandfather. I mean, your great, you, you are your great grandfather. Uh -huh. So his great grandson was actually him. You know, but uh, my great grandfather actually was living when I was born. Right. So that's the way that, that, that's the exactly. problem. That's the problem. Like son, that's right. right. Son, <laughs> now look, that same way with John the Baptist. They asked him, was he Elias? He like, no, I ain't Elias. So they try to put that spirit on because the script said he had the spirit of Elias on. No. There ain't no reincarnation. There's the resurrection where you will rise up and your soul will be put back in your body and you will be standing in the judgment line. Like everybody that ever existed on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's, it. that's it for that. All right, y'all, we're going to get to our top of hand. Anybody got any questions before we get back on this day? And know we're up to the fourth chapter. Oh, watch. Let's just hit that watchman right quick. Ezekiel, second chapter, because we have to be a watchman for our people. We have to warn them, but you have to warn them like a, a, a watchman would do. Not threaten them, but just tell them, look, man, a storm is coming. Get prepared. Yeah, really? If they don't want to hear it, then that's on them, but you got to give it to them just. You can't threaten them into it. You got to tell them, don't you know a storm is coming? And you got to make sure you prepare. Ezekiel, what we at? Second chapter. So we're going to read a little bit of Ezekiel chapter 2 and Ezekiel chapter 3. 2 is real short. We're just going to read a couple and 3, y'all. So y'all understand, you got two witnesses concerning the watchmen of Israel. Go ahead, bro. Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1. And he said unto me, Son of man, uh -huh. stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. And the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and sat me upon my feet. Then I heard him that spake unto me. Right. And he said unto me, Son of man, uh -huh. I send thee to the children of Israel right. to a rebellious nation. What kind of nation? A rebellious nation. A rebellious nation just don't want to hear what you're supposed to hear. Always, ah, go with that. Miss me with that. 
That kind is love. What right. are you talking about? Right. Go ahead. Right. To a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me. Right. Even unto this very day. Right. For well, they are impurity children. They're what? They are impurity children. Impurity. Impurity. Right. And a stiff heart. I do send thee unto them, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh God. Now understand what the Messiah is doing here. He warns all his prophets to put you up against. He's already letting them know you're dealing with some hard heads. But go to them anyway, the same way Moses tried to get out of his job. He said, the children of Israel are crazy. He said, I, I stutter them. They ain't going to believe what I'm saying. He's like, look, you going. You going. I don't care how you try. He said, but, but, but who should I tell them? And he said, just tell them I am. They ain't going to believe that. You just don't know these people. You right. No, no, they're nuts. And he's like, do this. Put your hand in here. See your bosom and pull it out. And it's going to be left. It was left of the snow. Stay at him and eat. And he put it back in there and came back to his other flesh. He said, this is what's going to happen. Don't no, worry about what you're doing. It's going to it's gonna be manifest to him. So these prophets knew the same thing. We just got to go tell Israel, y'all, y'all going to get the dirty looks. You're going to get the lift shot up to the side. Jews. Oh, it's good you're in the Bible. It's cute you're in the Bible. You're cute you're in the Bible. Hebrew <laughs> speak. <laughs> so the most high tell you already gonna get them looks. Mm -hmm. But go ahead and do it. Let's read some up. And he say, uh, thus saith the Lord God. Yes. And they, whether they will hear, whether they will do what? Whether they will hear, yes. or whether they will forbear. So the most high say, some of them gonna listen, some of them ain't. So y'all, we already know this. So why are you getting your underwear in a rough? Why are you so upset giving your own self a wedgie because somebody won't listen? The script had already told you some of them ain't going to listen. Some of them are. Let's get some more. For they are a rebellious house, hmm. yet shall know that there have been a prophet among them. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. Be what? Be not afraid of them. If you scared, go to church. Go ahead. Neither be... Neither, oh, oh, oh. Neither be afraid of their words. I don't care what they say. They cuss your neck. Please. <laughs> Yo, daddy was born in Mississippi. His daddy was born in Hebrew. Martha, come in here. You know what this boy is saying. <laughs> now you can say, see, I wasn't saying it like that. I was just saying, you know, you the brothers see. down there teaching that. You, you know, see. big mama, you guys ain't thinking that to eat. <laughs> no, it's going to be scorners and mockers. Yeah. But you got to stand bold as a lion. Get some over there, bro. Though bearers and thorns be with thee, right. and thou doest dwell among scorpions, Woo. Woo. <laughs> but be not afraid of their words, right. nor be dismayed at their looks, right. though they be a rebellious house. Understand this is constantly telling you they're going to be looking with a scowl like, they like, what? Uh. You are... Later for their feelings, then. Oh, so I'm it's a Jew. Don't worry about what they're going to look like. Don't worry about the look on their face. All of them ain't going to look like that, y'all. Right. Some of them going to accept this. But it's preparing you for the looks you're going to get. So when you get mad and say, man, I just can't. Man, my auntie, man, she was looking at me, man. That's, I think it's just disrespectful. I got the Bible in my hand. And she looked at me <laughs> like that. You ain't really know it's Hebrew, too. You couldn't have him feeling that way. Right. Let's get some more. And thou, and say, and thou shalt speak my words unto them, right? Whether they will hear, right? Or whether they will forbear, for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, right? Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. <laughs> Open thy mouth right. and eat that I give thee. Yeah, eat again like the same eat in the garden that needs to take in knowledge. Mm. Eve took in knowledge, mm. but she had another mouth to eat with. Mm. Y'all understand that? Let's get some more. And when I look, behold, 
a hand was set upon unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was therein, right. and he spread it before me, and it was written wherein and without, right. and there was written therein lamentations. And mornings and woes. So the Most High say you can't trip off the way they look because you're going to have to tell them the Most High is coming and he's going to be angry. You can't worry about nobody's feelings in this matter. You got to go do what the Most High told you to do. You got to get busy. If you ain't playing on this, you're in the wrong thing. You think this is a club to belong to. Click. Right. Some click. If you think that this was about you in the wrong room, they got the rooms down the hall. Yeah. Right. Ezekiel chapter 3. Book of Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 1. Uh -huh. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat this robe and go. Speak unto the house of Israel. Let me go another eating means to take it in knowledge. Uh -huh. uh, and he said, don't be rebellious, don't do none of these things, but take it and eat it so that you digest what I'm talking to you. And regurgitate it back. Chew it the good back to the nation of Israel. And let them eat. It's order. Verse 2. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that rose. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. Ooh, boy, that's where the word is. Hey, sweet First like manna bread. bread. Sweet. Verse 4. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee into the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech, mm and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language, whose words thou cannot understand. So he said, don't worry about it. He said, I'm sending you to somebody that's, they speak English, you speak English. They speak how you speak. They speak uh, Hebrew, you speak Hebrew. Um, there ain't going to be no mistranslation. You ain't got to worry about none of that. The Most High is just walking us down a path to where there's no way you can fall off course. Just do what I say and do it the way I tell you to do it. You can't go wrong. Go ahead. Surely had I sent thee to them, right. they would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel were not hearkened unto thee. For they were not hearkened unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard hearted. Mm. Behold, I have made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. Mm. As in, oh wait, bro. it's going to be a scowl kind of forehead. Yes, the most high say that forehead, when you're looking, it's going to be rough. We're trying to get this done for this call. So, y'all, the most high is already telling us, don't worry about how they look. They ain't looking tougher than you. <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 9. Uh -huh. As an adamant harder than flint, right. have I made thy forehead. Fear them not. That's right. Fear them not. Neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. That's right. Moby said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee, receive in thine heart, and hear with thine ears, and go. Get thee to them of the captivity unto thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, thus saith the Most High God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Then the Spirit took me up, and I heard behind me a voice of a great rushing, saying, Blessed be the glory of the Lord from this place. I heard also the noise of the wings of the living creatures that touch one another, and the noise of the wheels over against them, and the noise of a great rushing. So the Spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit, but the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. So Most High even delivered him to where he had to go. So y'all, we have to understand, here yeah, you're going to get dirty looks. We got it. <laughs> you're going to get mockings. We got it. But you got to stay strong with this. If you don't, this ain't for you. You want holding hands down the hall. Your old hands with you, y'all can make cotton candy. 
Yeah. Yeah. Do all that down the hall. But down here is the gospel of Christ. From Genesis to Revelation. Y'all, we got to understand that. We got to get it down. But we're going to move on. We just want to, bro, I had a question about the watchman. But we're going to get to, uh, I'm talking then. Executive order that I was just signed. Yeah, the, 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 the communications executive order. What's that? The Congress has made sign an uh, executive order. You can, you know, put that on for executive order. Uh-huh. Uh, on all private communications. Exec executive order. Executive order. Yeah. order. Yeah. Does that feel that right? E-X. E-X. E -X. E -X. I'm putting E-Z. Go ahead. E executive order. I don't know the exact number, but you can just you can Google it or whatever, and it'll pop right up. But they got executive orders on everything from shutting off the water, to shutting down the grocery stores, communication, radio, airway, all of them. So they, they sign these things all the time. Right? So they, they, they act up the security and the surveillance on all communications. Yeah, they just mm. Yeah, that's a couple days ago. Y'all can look that up as well. All right, y'all, we're going to get right back into it, the days of Noah, because this is what the Most High told us to look out for. He said, everything preceding my second coming is going to happen just like the days of Noah. So we can't look at what happened in Rome. We can't look at what happened with the Maccabees. We have to look exactly what was happening when Noah was alive. If you're looking over here, you're looking in the wrong spot. Like three card mind. If you're looking for the king, he shows you a queen. The script say, as the days of Noah was. That's our tip off. So we have telling us we need to go back and study everything that was taking place with Noah because it's happening in the same way. And the main thing it was was transhumanism. We see all through that mixing, mixing flesh, bestiality, mixing animal fleshes together, supernatural mixing. A lot was going on that the world was so wicked the Most High had to destroy it. But we see that he say it was giants in them days and after that. So we see that practice is still carrying on. The only difference now, they're doing it in laboratory. Just read an article today on some transhumanism, male online with his guy both Elvis Presley, some of his locks of his hair, and fusing with some Strange DNA, strands of his hair, and fusing with a rat. Now this rat is called Little Elvis. It's running around with Elvis DNA in it. So y'all, they, they continuing to do and practice what they're getting ready for, and you're going to see some crazy things. But we're going to hit a few scriptures on that. We're going to hit in the book of Jasher where they saw some of these things. Let's get it. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Genesis chapter 4. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. Uh-huh. And Adam knew Eve, right. his wife, right. and she conceived. Right. And bird came, right? And she and said, "I have gotten a man from the Lord." So right here we see Adam knew Eve. This is one knowing, and two children are born, right? So either they were twins, or one child was already in her womb. Now we know from chapter three that we read Lucifer seduced her. She she said he seduced her. All the penalty she got was between her legs. <laughs> It was more than some apple eating going on. So we understand that what happened was Lucifer seduced her, introduced her to Anna. She was the first, because Paul tells us that he wanted to present the church to Christ as a chaste virgin, not as Eve was. So Eve was not chaste when she was presented to Adam. She was tampered with. So we understand who Cain came from, and his image was just like his dad, low down. A dog. So, 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 what are we saying for the education? That we by the time he knew her, she was already tapping with him. Let's get this term called superfetation. Get that for me, Mally. Superfetation. This is what happened in the garden. She ate, and she ate with that mouth south of the belly button, because we know Proverbs chapter thirty, verse twenty, say, "Such is the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth, and say, I have done no wickedness." Now, what mouth is she eating with? Committing adultery. Exactly. The mouth south of the belly button. Because it's shaped just like the same way. Because the children, we ain't going to get too graphic. But y'all understanding that as well as Hosea 10 13 said, we have eaten the fruit of lies as well. So we understand there was a little bit more than some apple eating going on in the garden. And not only that, but Adam never once in these scriptures called Cain his son. 
Eve said, I have got the man from the Lord. Not even that. Because she was looking at him as a man child because when Satan got her, he fooled her into thinking that she was going to be married and bear the Christ child. So she's thinking, oh, I didn't, the Holy Spirit didn't come over me like it was supposed to do on Mary, and now I am the Christ child. No, you got the seed of the serpent. Right. But she knew Adam. That's right, but we're going to get to it, and we're going to see that Adam knew her again, and she had sex. So we're going to have two knowings and three children. Mm -hmm. So either we got to prove that they were twins, which we know other writers that they weren't born on the same day, but there's a term for what may have happened called superfetation. Get that for me now. Super, superfetation, right? Of the Webster's Dictionary. Superfetation. To conceive. To what? To conceive. What? While already pregnant. To conceive while already pregnant. Women can do it today. It happened in Germany. Woman pregnant by a white cab driver. <laughs> Hebrew soldier go over there sniffing around. He get her pregnant too. She have one black and one white baby by two different fathers. Y'all know who that? It's called polyandry. A woman that has two husbands. Ain't never been allowed in the scriptures. Never. Because you always end up on Maury Coleman. Ain't nobody gonna know who the dad is, baby. <laughs> Same way with what was going on in here, because we're gonna see when Seth is born, it says he was in Adam's image. Mm -hmm. Like Abel was who came key. Mm -hmm. Cain never respected the Lord's offerings. He said, I'm gonna do what I want to do. Mm -hmm. He committed murder for no reason. Just slayed his brother and then lied to the Lord and told him, I ain't got a clue for you. What you I'm supposed to look after Cain? Am I my brother's keeper? Lord said, okay, a vagabond on earth you're going to be. So he put that mark on him that every murderer have on him. And that's living like a vagabond, hiding in the trunk of cars, the police looking for you in a dirty clothes basket. <laughs> <laughs> so we understand that that mark is on any murder. It was on the boy that played for the Charlotte Hornets. Ray Peru hiding in the trunk of car, peeing in soda bottles and eat Snickers. Carolina Pound. Carolina Pound. Eating Snickers and peeing in soda bottles, hiding in a trunk. <laughs> or any murderer that shed innocent blood is going to be on the run, bouncing from city to city like a bag of bombs. Not a bag of bombs. Remember when mom used to say, boy, you remember the bag of bones. I was like, a whole sack of bones. Let's get some more. Where we at? Verse 2. That's right. And she again buried his brother Abel. And she did what? And she, and she again buried his brother Abel. There's no more knowing here. So she said, this is a continual birth. It's a continual birth. It's never new again. She said, and again, she buried Abel. But we know her curse in Genesis 2. 316 was pain during childbirth and multiple conception. Superfetation is multiple conception. Yeah, you see you already pregnant. Already pregnant, so she had multiple conceptions. Not only that, as we get into the other books, you see that sisters was born to Adam and Eve as well. That's how uh, you know things happen. Same way getting off the ark. Only eight people reproduce what we got on the earth now. So we have to understand that. Adam and Eve had twin sisters as well. She had possibly five births according to the book of Jasher, all within that time. And also the book of Jubilee said Cain was born in the first week of the third Jubilee. Then uh, Abel was born in the fourth Jubilee in the second week. And then each one of had sisters. So she was having multiple conceptions and birth in pain, just like the scriptures say. Go ahead, brother. Who Jubilee? Seven years? Seven years, seven week cycle. They're broke down by seven weeks and seven years. So it's telling you how they were born in the book of Jubilee's fourth chapter. So let's read a little so bit more. I have a question. So if she was pregnant with both of them at the same time, wouldn't they be delivered at the same time? No. No, she had I mean, she fraternal had, twins uh, ain't delivered at the same time. Had a brother. So when she's already pregnant, their gestation time is starting. This one may be born a little bit bit later after the time, and then we're talking about just fresh out of the garden. Okay. Adam still lived 930 years, so they still had a little left in them. You know, that the Most High had to, had to put this on them, just like the curse he put on Satan. 
Uh, he said, dust, you're going to eat all the rest of the days of your life. But we know until you read Isaiah 65, verse 25, we don't see Satan getting that punishment until Christ comes back. He said, then shall the dust be the serpent's meat. So we see that these curses are everlasting curses because they got to run to Christ come and sets it in order. That's why we still work by the sweat of our brows and Austin Lane is still open, receiving dead bodies. So no matter how righteous you get, the worms are going to visit your body unless Christ comes back first. So the death stain we can't take off us, neither can you women erase pain during childbirth. The only way you get shot with a, a dose of that effort, or what is it, epidural? Epidural. epidural? And that'll relieve some pain, but the hollering gonna be there, the screaming gonna be there, you're going to cuss that man out and say it's his fault. <laughs> so we understand that the most I put this on to Christ straighten that out. That's why 110, chapter 2, verse 12 through 15 says, you should be saved in childbirth if we get it back in order. So he goes back and tells a woman not to teach because she calls the problem to God and says the woman was in deception, mm -hmm. not the man. Mm -hmm. So, But she shall be saved in childbirth. Why is everything surrounding childbearing mm -hmm. or childbirth about what happened in the garden? I could see if it was saying you should have no teeth left in your mouth. Everybody will have the Leon Spinks look for life. <laughs> but it ain't. So what it was saying that Jubilee is about them being born before different different times of Jubilees because it's in it's in uh, weeks. It's weeks of seven. And it tell you all of them, even the daughters, were born in separate weeks of the Jubilees. But y'all get in there, when y'all just get online and Google the book of Jubilees. And it matches up with the scripture. The only way you can guarantee that it go, turn to Exodus 20 and 8, the law of God, or all of the law. If any of those books violate any of those 613 laws, put it down. Someone. Someone. Put it down. Put that book down if it breaks any of the laws of God. So we looked at it, and, and it goes hand in hand with the Bible per beta, and it makes you understand what took place in the garden, because we're going to see in the book of Enoch some of the same things happen with Noah. And also in the book of uh, James, the New Testament Apocrypha, in the, how you, how you pronounce that, Pro V, what man? Pro, Pro V, Angela. Pro V, and G, Leon. In the book of James, it says that when uh, Joseph came home from building houses and found the virgin pregnant and grown big, he smote on his breast and said, the exact story that happened to Adam has happened to me. For when Adam was away, the serpent eased up and seduced Eve, the same thing has happened to me. And he seduced my virgin. And now she got the big belly. He said, how am I looking at God's face now and somebody that crept in here, some wolf, and got you pregnant? She said, but I'm telling you, I ain't never had a man before. I'm telling you, you're like, well, you six months pregnant, what? She said, I don't know how it happened. I'm telling you, and an angel came to me like, look, that baby's the, of the Holy Spirit. Of the Most High, he's begotten of the Father. That's who put him there. And this man was at rest behind that. But we got some groups out here teaching that Joseph was his natural dad. And it said Joseph was a just man. If he's just, why is he putting her away? Is there something unjustly he did to the virgin? Mm -hmm. Well, they say, well, he had sex with her, but then he didn't have it no more with her until Christ was born. But well, the scriptures say she never knew a man. She never had. And Joseph was honored to put her away. Now, he's just. He know the laws of God. He's trying to, I got to put you away. You pregnant and it ain't mine. They going to know it ain't mine because they know I've been building a house. Go ahead. What's up, brother? Also, the Holy Spirit told him to take the child and her son to Egypt. That's right. And say his son is there, her son. You will never see where anywhere all through the two lineages in Matthew and also Luke 3. That gets and such and such begot, and such and such begot, but you will never see Joseph, and Joseph begot the Christ. Right. Mm -hmm. You will never see that, and it said, and Joseph, the husband of Mary, who, who was born Christ. But we, we saw Genesis 3, 16, and become the seed of a woman. Also, Revelation 12, chapter speaks of the seed of the woman. So the war that they had up in heaven was before the Garden of Eden. Satan was already fired up about that. So he was already ready to cause problems in this world. But let's get a little bit more of this fourth chapter while we're going to take a quick break, Charles.
Verse 2 again. Go ahead. And she again buried his brother Abel. Uh -huh. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. Right. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Right. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought the fruit of the ground and offering unto the Lord, Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought his first leans and his flock of the fat of his flock of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. So we see that uh, Abel was keeping the laws of God at that point because he brought the first thing of his flock and offered it. Cain brought what he felt like brought. He was rebellious and disobedient. Where do you think he got that from? His daddy was okay until he listened to the wrong one, but he got himself together after that before these boys were born. But he was a mirror image of his dad. Hold that here some 1 John chapter 3. The book of 1 John. 1 John, the same one. 1 John. Re not regular John, but 1 uh, book of John. Let us one John. Let us down 1 through 3. First John chapter 3, y'all. First John chapter 3, verse 12. First John chapter 3, verse 7. Back by revelation. First John 3 and 7. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil. Of the who? The devil. Okay. For the, now hold on. All of us committed some sin this week. Does that make us of the devil if we don't repent and do? You know, we have to understand that it's giving us in spiritual and it's going to break it down on us. Go ahead, bro. Read some more of that. For the devil sinned from the beginning. From when? The beginning. So the devil sinned early when iniquity was found in him. As we read in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 12 on down, that we see when he was on the mount, he committed iniquity. So we know the laws that are in heaven are the same laws as here on earth. He committed transgression up there and was cast down. So from the beginning, he was wicked. Let's read some more. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifest, right? that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of Yah doeth not commit sin, right? for his seed remaineth in him. So we're talking about who's born of the Most High. Christ was his only begotten Son. He's the tree of life. A good tree can not bring forth evil fruit, according to Matthew 12, Matthew 7 and 7. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. The Father is the root of the tree, and Satan is the tree of good and evil, the tree of knowledge. So he's bringing forth corrupt fruit. Everything he touched was corrupt. Cain never did anything righteous in his life. Went on down the nod and created some more drama. Built weapons of war and taught music and using them against us. Cain was wicked till he left this earth, and every one of his offsprings was the same way. It's a straight lineage. The book of Judah tell us Adam, I mean, uh, 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 Enoch was the seventh from Adam. Now, if Cain was Adam's son, and you start counting back from Enoch, that'll make eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you got to put Abel in there. You got to put Abel in there. If you're not counting Abel, then why are you counting Cain and he did too? Let's get some more. What we at? Verse, rest of verse 9. Verse 9. Uh, Whosoever is born of Yah doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. That's right. Neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard 
from the beginning. See, and we keep going back to the beginning, back to the Garden of Eden. We got to love one another. That's the command. Go ahead. So it's keep telling you these things take back to the beginning, and then we get right back to what the beginning at, and who do it pick up with? The rough. Oh, that finish you good. Go ahead. That we should love one another. Uh, not as Cain. Not as who? Not as Cain. Right. Who was of that wicked one. He was of that wicked one. When we look up love, no matter how you look at it, how you slice it, it'll say the offspring or seed of. He never done anything righteous, anything according to the law. It says in, in the book of Jazz, second chapter, it says he repented of himself. He didn't go to the Lord and repent for killing Abel. It's the same way Judas did. The script say Judas repented of himself. He tried to go take the money back and right the wrong instead of telling the Lord, I'm sorry about what I've done. He's going to try to fix the problem. He said himself. Repented to himself. Cain repented the same way. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have started lying to the most high right after that if it was true repentance. His next word is, Where's Abel? Man, I ain't got a clue. Am I my brother's people? Well, where Abel that I hear his blood from God? They got to do with me. So we understand that that repentance was not a repentance of life or returning to the ways of the Most High. He was going the way of his dad because his dad had never repented. Still to this day, he ain't repent, And he can't repent now because he already doomed. He already got the death penalty. So he want to take as many of us with him as he can. Mm -hmm. Let's read a little bit more of that. Is that done? No, I'm off the Okay, way. verse 12. Not as Cain, uh -huh. who was of that wicked one, right? and slew his brother, right? and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's right, see, his works were evil. Now look, where did he learn that evil from? His only because people on planet Earth, Adam and Eve. So did he learn it from Eve? Or he learned it from Adam? One of the two, because we know Adam was a commandment keeper after that transgression to listen to his wife. But Adam never ate from the serpent. He said, that woman you gave to me, she gave it to me and I ate. So his punishment was totally different from me. His punishment was, since you like to listen to your woman and she called the shots, I told you to discipline her. I told you to give her the words of the Lord and you let somebody else talk to her. So for that... This is your punishment. Now, if he was doing the same thing his wife was doing, then his punishment would have been the same thing. He'd have been smoted in his genitals. Mm -hmm. The same way he was. But if you see the act that both they created, they created acres and covered this part, not this part up here. So you know what went on. It don't take rocket science to understand what was happening in the garden. He was trying to get his first temple priestess just like Jezebel started in the garden. That's what he do. That's how he get down. The Mac Dad, Mr. Blink, pretty boy, good girls, little bad boys started in the garden of Eden. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Right. She looked at him and looked at Adam and she like, hey, he ain't got nothing but a little retirement here working in the garden. You got all that Jezebel going and you can sing like that. When you get into Ezekiel 28 chapter, it tells you what Satan had. He could sing. He was the most beautiful angel. He had all the jewels on. And then he said, well, I'm like this. I need to be up there. What Christ said. Why you got me on this second left? Con the third of the angels. And they pulled a power move that didn't work. So this thing been going on a long time, y'all. He ain't going to stop. He never quits. Let's get some more. Where we at? First 13. We're going to take a break about five minutes, y'all. Marvel not, my brethren, uh -huh. if the world hates you, right? We know that we have passed from death of the light because we love the brethren. Right. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Right. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Right. And ye know that no murderer have eternal life abiding in him. Go right on. Flip over to the book of Jude, right there. This is the 11th verse. It's right before Revelation. And we see that. that they have no life in them yet. No murderer. See, that mark continues to go. Even in the book of Acts, I believe it's the 24th chapter, when uh, uh, Paul was shipwrecked. He was gathering some wood and reached in there to grab some wood, and a pit viper came out and clapped on his hand, and he just shook it off. 
And they were like, either this man, well, they thought he was a murderer because he was fleeing in the shipwreck. But when he just threw that snake off, they're like, oh, this man must be of the children of Israel, a direct lineage, the Holy Spirit on him. He just shook that snake off of him like it wasn't nothing. All of that poison, and he just like, get out of here, and kept gathering wood. But y'all, we got to get that protection as mentioned in Ephesians 6 and 9, the whole arm of the Most High. If you ain't got it on, get prepared for Satan to wear your weary end out. Where is it at in Ephesians? Six and nine. Put on the whole arm of the Lord. Also, Isaiah 55, 17 say the same exact thing. You hate your brother, you are a straight murderer. And understand this. He was, that's why Eve was the mother of all living, not Adam. See, so we have to understand because Satan was had his death threat. Or, I mean, his, his curse punishment to the lake of fire was already ministered to him. So Eve is the mother of all living, not Adam. And nowhere in this scripture you will read that Adam's sire came. Mm. He became his father because he's the son of, of, of his wife. Just like anybody here, you end up with a young lady you marry and she got a child with her. That's your child. He's under your roof. He's not your biological, but he's your son. That's why they said the same thing. They call him thou son of Joseph. But he would tell him in a minute, my father live up here. Me and my father got a crib up on this level of heaven. This is my earthly dad. He know the deal. He already know the play. And the Pharisees always look and say, how can he disrespect his daddy like that? Right. They didn't send him to the cross because he said he was a uh, uh, Joseph's son. They sent him because he said he's calling himself the actual son of God, the begotten of, of the father. He's saying he used to dwell up there. Because he told him in John 8, 56, you know Abraham, he said, man, before Abraham was, I am. they like, how you know Abraham and you ain't even 50 years old? So the mindset that the Pharisees had was Christ was not telling them that Joseph was his daddy, but he'd go way back past Abraham. Because he ate with Abraham in the 18th chapter of Genesis, right before they went to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. He sat down with him. Abraham called him Lord. We know all throughout these scriptures, no angel is ever to be called Lord. We see Peter had to get up or bow to uh, Revelation chapter 9, 19, I believe, 19, 10, the angel told John to get up. We brother, you can't worship me, worship God. So we understand that. But that was uh, Christ uh, dealing with Abraham in the 18th chapter of Genesis. Go ahead, sis, what you got? He came down to bless Abraham. Yeah, he did. In the 18th chapter because, see, no angels, angels take orders. They can't change any decision. When, when the Lord came down, Abraham called him Lord. He said, will you eat with me? And he sent the two angels on to Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, go on, do what I told y'all to do. And Abraham kept asking, will you change your mind if there's 50 righteous? He said, if it's 50 righteous, I'll change my mind. If it's 40 righteous, if it's 30 righteous, if it's 10 righteous. Abraham didn't want to go to five. He like, my, my, my nephew locked her. It ain't ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham was bitter at that point. Just like he ate, though. He was, just like he ate when he was resurrected. That's right. If you read uh, Luke 23, Christ got out the grave and ate of, uh, some fish in a honeycomb. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So it's not the <clears throat> past to say, well, how was he eating? You know what I'm saying? Well, he ate after he resurrected as well. They put on immortality. He still ate with them. So that's what John 856 tied Genesis. 18 together. He was saying that was me. It's the same way where that first Corinthians uh what what well uh, uh he talked to him and said that rock was Christ. Yeah, chapter 10. Chapter 10 of 1 Corinthians say the same thing that that rock that led them out of Egypt was that was Christ. So we have to understand Christ has always been around, but he had to be born in the flesh to fulfill Isaiah 53, Isaiah 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. He had to fulfill those things. So he had to come in the flesh. He had to feel pain like we do. He had to go through all of the suffering that we had to go through to let you know, y'all, we can beat this thing. But we have to have faith. Just a mustard seed word. The small seed word. What you got, D? He came and he came and sat down and ate with uh, Moses, too. Yeah. In uh, Exodus 24. And, and the other elders of Israel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all talking. Then we know because Moses asked in, in the 33rd chapter, 32nd chapter of, of, of Exodus, 
Lord, please let me see your glory so that I know you exist. He said, well, you can't see my face because I have a kid. You know, and he is the glory of the Father, just like we are the glory of Christ. And our women are the glory of the man. That's the way it goes in the order, 1 Corinthians 11 chapter. This is the order of things that go on in the whole universe. The Father, the Messiah, the man, the woman, and children. Numbers 30 tell you the same exact thing. So we have to understand that there is order. And Christ is the glory of his Father. And, and Moses has to see that. So he passed in front of him, put him in a cleft of a rock. He said, I'm going to put my hand over your eye. I'm going to pass by. You ain't going to see my face, but you're going to see the backside. Because we cannot see Christ in his glory. Not in these sinful bodies. When he, when he took Peter and uh, James and John up to the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew 17, that was a vision that they saw him in his glory. And guess who was right there? The Father. When they said, should we make three tabernacles? One for Moses, one for you, and one. And the Father said, hear him. Not Moses and, and, and Elijah. Hear him. And that cloud was right above him. That was the Father telling him, listen to my glory. This is who we call in the shots. You have to understand that there's no other way around but to go through Christ. Any other way to rob and defeat. You go through Benjamin Carter, you got some problems. Go through Jim Jones, David Koresh, you're going to have some problems. You line Mitchell, uh, uh, Elijah Poole, all of them you're going to have some problems if you try to sneak up the back way. Let's just walk. Who got a question? Who had a question? Y'all good? How was that? Man was able to eat with them without seeing his face. Now that we talk about his glory, Moses was transferred in, was transfigured into that when he came off the mount. Remember, they could the children of Israel couldn't stand and look at him. They had to create a veil and put it over his face because the glory of the Lord was shining on him. It was so bright, ten thousand times the sun, that they couldn't look at him. He had to cover his face. He had to actually wear a veil over his face because the brightness of the Lord was on. Him. And that's why he punished. Uh, Miriam and Aaron were speaking out against Moses. He's like, that's my servant that I chose to do this. How dare y'all speak out against him? But Miriam was doing the most fat mouth. And Aaron was just coaching off, giving yeah, and telling this too. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tell him this too. And he punished her with leprosy for seven days. Put her out the camp for fat mouth. So we understand that, but then Moses got beside himself. And spoke ill advised at the waters of Mary Bar and talk about struck the rock. Shall God, shall we give you water? And the water gushed out. But the most high told me, he said, Come here, Moses. We got to know. I need to talk to you. What's this we stuff? You sanctify yourself with me? You thought that's you? You can't see the promised land for that. So, y'all, we have to understand that he's no respectful person. Right. Where we at? Read that you just left the first. You left the first. Uh huh. No, start at verse 9. Jude, so. okay. Jude chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. Yet Michael the archangel, right. Mark Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil. What he was doing? He was contending with the devil. Right. He disputed above about the body of Moses. Durst, Durst. 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 not bring it again a railing accusation. But said the Lord rebuked thee. So when Michael was dealing with the with, with Satan, he didn't have to cuss him out. He didn't tell him, get your crooked foot on the way here about the body of Moses. He just said the Lord rebuked you and Satan stepped back. Y'all have to understand, we have that power in ourselves to just say, I rebuke you, and he gets back. But he cons us into letting him in. Look at you. You in a sad way. Keep on going down there with them Hebrews, they done turn their lights off. When are you going to get with the program like all my other servants here? Join the Illuminati. Join the Masons and get you some help. You suffering with them people. And there we go. Chasing the way of Satan because he can reward now. You don't want to wait. We have no patience. Let's get a little bit more of that. Just want you to read down to verse 14. Okay. Verse 10. Uh -huh. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally uh -huh. as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain. Of the way of who? In the way of Cain. Right. And ran greedily at the era of Belan. See, they go the way of Cain. 
And it's just telling you his name. And why does Cain keep coming up? Satan around him talking about this. Cain and Satan keep being tied together. Right. It ain't rocket science. Some reason these two keep getting linked together. We just together. don't see right here in chapter 14. It speaks of the book of Enoch as well as Genesis. So we study from the book of Enoch as well. 46 chapters. I there, there I beheld the ancient of days. Same way mentioned in Daniel 7 chapter. Whose head was like white wool. And with him another. Whose countenance resembled that of a man. His countenance was full of grace. Like that of one of the holy angels. Then I required of one of the angels who went with me and showed me every, every secret thing concerning this son of man. Who he was, whence he was, and why he accompanied the ancient of days. And he answered and said unto me, This is the son of man to whom righteousness belongs, with whom righteousness has dwelt. And who will reveal all that which is conceived. For the Lord of spirits has chosen him. And his portion has surpassed all before the Lord of spirits in everlasting uprightness. So even Enoch knew that the Lord was always there. He would visit earth on occasion. But it was a time he had to be born on this earth. To manifest, to reap, to correct what Adam had messed up. 